Welcome to Simple Truth Gospel with Kiri Anuzation. Blessed be my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving me another opportunity to teach His precious word to His own precious people. Today, I am teaching on a very important subject which I have titled, It is God's Will to Heal You Today. You know, human doctrine and religion have taught so many Christians that it is not always the will of God to heal. Sometimes they say he heals and sometimes he doesn't heal. Some even say that healing has been done away with and that it ceased to exist when the last apostle died. Because of these wrong teachings, so many Christians have bound with infirmities and diseases for a very long time because their faith are hindered. The Word of God says in Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, himself took our infirmities and bore our diseases. If Jesus Christ took our infirmities then, he is still taking them today because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So today, I'm going to take you through scriptures to teach you how to receive your healing regardless of how long you have been sick because faith begins where the will of God is known. If you're watching this program for the first time, this is Simple Truth Gospel with Kira and Uzeishin. I have a YouTube channel, and if you subscribe, you'll always get a lot anytime I have new teachings available. And you can also access my archive on YouTube. There are so many teachings there that are free of charge. Our partners all over the world make these teachings available. And if you would like to be a partner of this ministry to help us reach more people all over the world, you can do so and send your donations using the address that is showing on your screen. The teachings are in, the, in that archive will help you in your Christian work. For your questions, your testimonies, your prayer requests, feel free to send me an email using simpletruthgospel at hotmail.com. It will also be on your screen. Or you can simply write us using the address that is showing on your screen right now. Before we continue with today's teaching, let's go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray for utterance that I will teach, I will speak boldly to your people today as the oracle of God. Make my tongue as the pen of a ready writer. Praying also for your anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Anointing that will teach us, guide us, direct us, lead us into all the truth. Show us the thing that we need to get out of today's teaching. Holy Spirit, you are the great teacher. Please open the eyes, the ears, the heart of each and everyone listening today. Minister to them simultaneously. Show them what exactly you want them to receive. Let the light of the glorious word of God shine in our part. Show us what is you and what is not you. If there is something that you have showed us in the past and we let them pass us by, we ask you that you show us again. We propose to be not just hearers of the word of God, but do us as well. Father God, always is none of me, but all of you be praised and glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, Friends, I welcome you again on today's program. Like I said earlier, the title for today is It is God's Will to Heal You Today. If you have been sick for a long time, today is your day. At the end of this teaching, if you get hold of this teaching, you will be able to get up from that sick bed and walk away. Whatever infirmities or sicknesses or diseases that have bound you these so many years, I don't care what the situation is. I don't think, I don't care how big the name is. Everything bows to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you would listen to this teaching today and understand it and receive it and act upon it, I assure you, sickness will be a pain of the past in your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know so many Christians, like I said earlier, 
human doctrines and religion, they have taught human, they have taught Christians that it is not God's will to heal all the time. They say sometimes God will heal you, sometimes He will not. And then they say sometimes God will use sickness just to uh, uh, humble you, to increase your piety. They will say that uh, sickness is a part of our suffering with Christ. But I'm telling you, brethren, you can search high and low all through the scriptures. You will not see a place where God is using sickness to humble somebody or where God is not, it says that it's not his will to heal somebody. Everyone that was brought to Jesus Christ, he healed them all. He did. He healed every one of them. So today, first of all, I want to clear your minds. Because remember there is ignorance based on wrong teaching. So when people are ignorant because they were taught wrong, the answer to that problem is to reteach them. And if they will renew their mind, they'll be alright. So let me first of all tell you where sickness comes from. Because it's not from God. So I'm going to take you now through scriptures to we go, we go through scriptures now to show you where sickness comes from. It is not from God. So God cannot give what he does not have. It is not possible. Where does sickness come from is a good question. So in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, the Bible says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. Who went about healing all those that were oppressed of the devil? For God was with him. So Jesus Christ went about teaching and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. If sickness came from God, it tells you right away here that it came from the oppression came from Satan. If sickness came from God, then Jesus Christ will be walking against God's will, healing those that were oppressed. So this scripture here makes it very clear that it is devil who has put, who has sickness. God does not have sickness. In Luke chapter 13 verse 16, Jesus Christ says, Of not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from her bondage on a Sabbath day. Jesus Christ is saying it. He says, Lord, Satan has bound this woman for all these years. So, you can see it now very clear that the sickness is not from God. God cannot give what he does not have. Jesus made it very clear here. He said, Oh, not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, Lord, these 18 years will lose from her bondage on a Sabbath day. He, he tells us here right away. If we go to John chapter 10, verse 10, the popular one, everybody loves this one. The Bible says, the thief comes, but to steal, kill, to destroy. But I am come that they may have life and have it even more abundantly. Jesus Christ is talking here. He tells us what Satan is doing. To kill, to steal, to kill, to destroy. Exactly, that's what, that's what sickness does. You see, sickness is in people's life to destroy them. To destroy their livelihood. It will incapacitate them from going to work. Destroying their livelihood. It will put a burden on family members. Stealing from them that which they're supposed to have. And that is abundance. So, it tells us again that uh, the modus operandi... The way that Satan goes around to incapacitate people is true. He will come in, he will steal, he will kill, and he will destroy. And part of one of the ways of him achieving this is through sickness and disease. Is that very clear to you, uh, uh, brethren? I'll give you one more. One more. In the book of Job, remember the Bible says that Satan smote Job with sickness from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Who did that? He was certain of his smote job with sickness. So now that I have made it very clear to you that 
Sickness does not come from God. Because remember that faith begins where the will of God is known. You cannot have faith in something that you don't know about. So now you know. Sickness is not from God. And it is the will of God that you be made well and made whole and complete and healthy all days of your life. I believe that your faith is beginning to kick in now. <laughs> you know, remember, it's not an instant pudding. So we're going to walk it. We, you, follow me in segments. We're going to walk this in out. At the end of this today's teaching, you'll be so bored and you will stand up and say to Satan, enough is enough. Get your hands off my body. This will happen to many people watching this program right now. It will happen at the end of today's teaching. You will be able to say that. I know because I know it is true. That's why I'm saying it. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's talk about if it is God's will to heal. I, I told you about um, uh, uh, where sickness comes from. And now I want to show you that it is the will of God to heal. Just to counter the doctrine that so many people have had all their lives, that God heals sometimes, sometimes he doesn't heal. It bears, you know, depends on. Some say, some say that uh, uh, healing ceases to exist uh, uh, when the last apostle died. You know, all these things are human uh, calisthenics. It, they are all things that are made up. Teachings, doctrines. Now, because a doctrine has been in your denomination or in your church for 20 years, 30 years, 100 years, does not make it the word of God. It does not make it the truth. So, the moment you realize and you come across the truth, it is now your responsibility to follow the light that you, you now see so that you can be delivered. This is why so many people are bound. So many people are hemmed in because of wrong teachings. They think that it's not the will of God to heal them. So now, let me go through, through Bible scriptures to show you that it's the will of God to heal. All right, it is the will of God. Now, if we go through the accounts given to us by uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we call them the gospel accounts. There are about 20 or 19, depending on how you count, individual healings that uh, the Holy Spirit recorded for us. I mean, there are scores of thousands of healings that Jesus Christ did in the Bible. Remember, John said that if all the things Jesus Christ said and did were recorded for us, said the world would not contain the books. So it was only a fraction, a tiny little bit. The one that the Holy Spirit, the one that he, he think that we should know. He gave us a recording. So there are about 20 or 19, you know, depending on how you count, I said, of individual healings that the Bible recorded for us in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We have details about these healings. It tells you who was healed. What was wrong with them and how they received their healings? There are about 20 of them. So in all of these 20 different healings, none of them Jesus Christ said no. In every one of them, it was his will to heal them. And I'm going to take you to one particular account. We're going to read it together now so that you can see what I'm saying. Here, Jesus answered that big question. I believe that if you go through the 20 accounts that I just told you about individual healings in the gospel, I believe that there is a big revelation in every single one of them. What the Holy Spirit wants us to get hold of. Every single one of them, I believe. If you go through all the accounts, there are about 20 of them, like I said, you will get big revelations from every single one of them. So now I'm going to take you to, uh, uh, let's read this one. In this particular one, Jesus Christ himself answered that big question. He said, it is my will to heal. I will heal you. I'm paraphrasing right now. But he says, it is my will to heal. Jesus answered that question that have uh, uh, stolen from so many Christians their health. Because they think it's not the will of God to heal. So, Jesus answered that question here. So, let us go 
Go with me to Matthew, Gospel according to Matthew chapter 8. And we're going to read verse 1 all the way to verse 3. And then we're going to pick it up again from verse 5 all the way to 7. And you can see exactly what Jesus Christ said. It is, this, is, <clears throat> this, is, this is mind-blowing. You know, a lot of people don't know about this. But today, after today's uh, teachings, you will, you will stand bold and say, No more sickness in my life. I am sick and tired of these things. I will give no place again for them in my life. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go to Matthew. Like I said, we're going to read a, a, a chapter 8. And we're going to read from verse 1 all the way to 3. And pick it up again from verse 5 all the way to 7. So I read Matthew chapter 8 verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, from the mountain, great multitude followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleaned. Did you hear that, my friends? Let me read that again so that we can get hold of it. He says, when Jesus Christ came down from the mountain, he says, a, a leper came and worshipped him. And he said to Jesus Christ, he said, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me whole. This is one of those that believe that God has the power to heal. But will he heal? This is where so many Christians, this is where so many Christians lie right now. They know. They are aware. They understand the power of God to heal. They believe God can heal. But they have this question about his willingness to heal. Is he willing to heal? This is the same problem this leper here went through. He knew Jesus Christ can heal. He has the power and the authority to heal. But his question is uh, his willingness to heal. So he asked Jesus, Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ made it very clear to him. What did Jesus Christ say? Now let's read verse 3. Tells us the answer Jesus Christ gave to the leper. When he doubtedly asked Jesus, Will you heal me? I know you can. Will you? Is it your will? And Jesus Christ answered and said in verse 3, He says, And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him and saying, I will. Jesus said it. Have you had the answer to that big question that have hindered so many Christians from receiving their healing? Jesus Christ answered it here very clear. He said, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was clean. It is the will of God to heal. If somebody has taught you over the years or still teaching you, even as I speak, that it is not the will of God to heal, tell them to go to Matthew chapter 8 verse 3. Jesus Christ answered that question that it is his will to heal. Remember, Jesus Christ is the same. He's not respecter of persons. What he, do, what he do for one, what he does for one, he will do for another. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never change. So if he did that, if he answered, I will, then he is still saying, I will today. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now let's step forward. Let's step a little bit forward. Let, let's go to verse 5 now, like I said. We read 1 to 3, uh, Matthew chapter 8, 1 to 3. Now let's skip 4 and go to verse 5. And when Jesus Christ was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Verse 7. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Did you see that again? The willingness of Jesus Christ to heal. The moment the centurion made the request, Jesus Christ said, I will come. He didn't say, uh, go and count how, how, how many good things you've done and see if you qualify to receive this healing. Go and find out. Uh, let me first of all consult and pray and see if it's the will of my Father in heaven uh, to, to, to see if I come and heal your servant. No. Jesus Christ 
manifested his willingness by his spoken words when he said, I will come and heal him. So now we see that it is the will of God Almighty, it is the will of Jesus Christ to get you healed. Now then, let's go back to our teaching. So now, that we have showed, I have, I have, I have, I have given you scriptures now to show you that it is God's will to heal. Remember Peter, Peter's mother-in-law. When Jesus Christ came into the house of Peter, the Bible says that the mother-in-law was, uh, was, 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 was lying down with a high fever. Delirious. She was a very high fever. And they besought him for her. They besought Jesus Christ on her behalf to heal. And Jesus Christ immediately rebuked that fever. He spoke to the fever and the fever left her. And she stood up and ministered to them. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now, let me give you some scriptures. You know, perhaps you, you, you don't know that there are scriptures in the Bible that say that, healings, that healing is already done. It's a finished work in the past tense. It already finished. All you do is you receive. Remember, you receive healing. It's a gift. Jesus Christ paid the price. When he went to the weeping post, when he took those stripes on his back, he paid for every sin, took all the sins and infirmities of human of humanity. So you receive healing. That's what to do because it's already accomplished by faith. So you remember First Peter chapter two verse twenty four. By his stripes you were healed. In the past tense, Peter was quoting Isaiah. And then if we go to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The testament of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we were healed. By his stripes we were healed. By his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. It's already done deal. In Matthew chapter 8, Verse uh, uh, 17. The Bible says, Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Already done. Jesus took all of them. Now say with me, What He took, I, res I refuse to take. What He bore for me, I refuse to bear. So what Jesus Christ already did, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to do it again. Why would you want to do what He already did for you? Why would you want to do that? In some, in some one or three, verse one, if you read all the way to three, He tells you that Himself, He said, "Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases?" He did. Send forth his word. Deliver them from all their diseases. From all their infirmities. From all their troubles. From all their souls. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there is one big thing that I would like you to come to the knowledge of today. It will, it will set you free. When you understand this, what I'm going to say right now, it will make it easier for you to receive your healing today. When you get hold of what I am about to say right now. Now healing is in the same redemptive work of Christ. I'm going to say it again. Healing is in the same redemptive work of Christ. Now there are so many Christians they believe that their sins are forgiven. That they are born again. That their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That if they die now, they will go be with Jesus. They have no questions about it. They believe that with all their heart. They are born again. They are Christians. But they don't believe that Jesus Christ took their infirmities and bore their sicknesses. The same way he took their sins 
and wash them away in his precious blood. Healing is in the same redemptive work. The same day Jesus Christ went to the cross. Are you hearing me, somebody? That day, Jesus went to the cross. He accomplished three different things on that cross. Spirit, soul, and body. Are you hearing me? In spirit, you were recreated and made a new creature when you received salvation, which means he took all your sins. This one so many people believe. But the same verse in Isaiah tells you, the same chapter in Isaiah tells you that not only did he took our, 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 sick, our, our sins away, he says he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripes who were healed. He tells you the same day that when he went to the weeping post, when they laid those stripes on his back, that was when he took all the infirmities of mankind, took all of them away. The same redemptive work. Now, he says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. That which brought peace unto us was laid upon him. So your, 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 your soul was delivered as well. The thing that tormented your peace, Keeping you from having a sound mind. Jesus Christ also took care of the same day in his redemptive work. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust God that you are getting hold of what I'm saying because this will, it will set you free. It will set you free. So now then, now that we have established that healing is in the same redemptive work of Christ as uh, salvation is, so now, the same way you receive salvation, how did you receive salvation? When you got born again, how did that happen? You confess Jesus Christ with your mouth. You believe in your heart, faith, that God raised him from the dead, and then you became born again. So that's how he got born again. You receive it by faith. You did not pray to God and cry and weep for days and fasted 25 days for you to receive salvation. The minister ministered the word to you and your, your spirit got convicted of that one sin of rejection of Jesus Christ. And the power of God, the power in his word made you step forth. You went to that altar call and you confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you became born again. The same way he lived is. And I'm going to take you through scriptures just to show you that it is the same redemptive work. So if you believe and you receive salvation by faith, the same way you receive healing by faith, it is in the same redemptive work. So now let me take you through scriptures because I couldn't tell you something that I will not give you scriptures to back it up. I will not. Now let me take you to, uh, let's go with me to Matthew, you know. We're going to back Matthew again. So we're going to read Matthew now, but chapter 9. Before we read chapter 8. Now we're going to read chapter 9. The account of the paralytic. So we're going to read from verse 1 to 6. Let's go, let's go with me with, uh, to Matthew chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. So now... So I read Matthew chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. And he says, And he entered into a ship, and passed over, and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of, of palsy, laying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing the faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins are forgiven thee. Pay attention to this one, what Jesus Christ said. He says, Son, be of good cheer, that saints be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. These are the people who were sitting down there listening to what Jesus Christ was saying. The Bible says that those who are doctors of, law, of the law, the scribes, they gathered there to listen to him teach. So they say within themselves, who is this man to say, your sins are forgiven you? He's blaspheming. And Jesus, knowing that thought, said, Wherefore think you evil in your hearts? 
Now, verse 5, pay attention. For whether it is easier to say, that sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and work? This is what Jesus Christ said to them. Let me read again. This is where the answer lies. You think if you catch this one, then you, are, you will understand what I'm saying. Catch it. Catch it. Now, let me read that again. Verse 5. For whether it is easier to say, that sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and work? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, said he to the sick of the palsy, Rise, take up your bed, and go unto their house. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me, let me explain this so that you, you understand what I'm saying here. Now, Jesus Christ is saying here that there is no difference between forgiveness of sin and healing. That's what he's saying here. We saw this in verse 5. He says, which one is easier? When they were questioning his ability to forgive sin. And he said to them, which one is easier to say? That sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and work. So Jesus is saying here, there is no difference between forgiveness of sin and uh, healing. He said both of them were taken care of in the, his redemptive work. That both of them, remember, they have the same source. Disease sickness they have the same source with what sin the same source remember there was no sickness in the world until sin entered into the world sin brought with him sickness and disease are you hearing me so they have the same source and because they have the same source when one is taken care of the other one is taken care of too has sin not been dealt with? I'm asking you, brethren. Jesus Christ took care of sins. He washed away all our sins in his own precious blood. So when the stain that brought sickness in was taken care of, that's when sickness also was taken care of. So that's what Jesus Christ was saying here. He says there is no difference between two of them. When one is taken care of, the other one is taken care of too. So because they have the same source, you receive them the same way. You receive salvation by faith. You receive your healing by faith. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now then, let's go back again to... Let's go back. And now, let me give you more verses. In, uh, in Psalm, Psalm chapter 1, or 3. Verse 1 to 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not his benefits. Now listen now. He says, who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, the, the psalm, the psalm is here. He puts two of them in the same verse. He says, who forgives all your iniquities and who heals all your diseases? In the same verse. The same time he did one, he did the other. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me give you one more. One more. In James chapter 5, verse 14, a very popular one. Very popular one. 14 and 15. Is there any sick among you? He said, let him pray. For, let him, he said, let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And he says, and the Lord shall raise him up. Now listen. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Are you hearing that? This one again connects sickness and uh, sin. He said, tell one who was healed, if he committed sin, he will be forgiven him. That one who was healed, if he how if 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 that be sins he committed, they will be forgiven as well. When he received that healing, was when he received what? Forgiveness. That's what he's saying here. Are you following? Are you following me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay now. So now. How do you receive your healing? How do you receive your healing? You receive your healing by faith. Now, I want to make this point very clear to you. 
so that you that is listening to me now, you don't go wasting your time. You don't receive your healing by fasting. You don't receive your healing by praying 24 hours. Are you hearing me? To so many Christians, they will not understand what I'm saying because this is out of ordinary from what they have had so many years in their churches. But I'm, are, we, are we not reading scriptures here? I'm reading scriptures. Because if you, when you get the truth, it will only, it's only the truth that will set you free. Not human doctrine or, or human teachings. Jesus Christ says, there are the things that make the word of God of no effect. So that's why I want you to get hold of this. And I teach, giving you references from the Bible, so that you know this is the word of God. So you receive healing by faith. Not by praying. Not by fasting. Not by calling somebody. You know, there are so many ways that you can receive your healing. Remember, I'm going to go over them if I get time. There is a way somebody can lay hands on you. You know, they can call the elders of the church. They can pray for you. you know. But I'm talking about in all of this, the Bible says the prayer of faith. They can pray 24 hours if they want to. Or lay their hands upon your head until all the hairs in your head rub off. But if they are not done in faith, it's a waste of time. So you receive by faith. Now, there is a rare situation, it doesn't happen all the time, when you receive without your faith being involved. So this we call the manifestation of the Spirit. Or gifts of the Spirit of God. And if you read the First Corinthians chapter 12, uh, if you pick it up from 8, verse 8, you will see what I'm talking about here. So there is one of them we call a special faith. Uh, Jesus Christ manifested this when he went to the pool of Bethesda. Remember, that place was filled with, uh, with broken humanity. Falls with different kinds of, 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 of sicknesses and diseases. All of the places. They were filled with, human, with, with different kinds of sickness and diseases. But Jesus Christ went there and healed only one person. He went there and asked him, would I be made whole? He asked the man. The man didn't come to him. He didn't ask for healing. And Jesus Christ healed only one person. There were so many people there. So that was a manifestation of the Spirit of God. Are you hearing me? So there are people who have special anointing. And the Holy Spirit will manifest to them through what we call special faith. And... They can initiate, but in this one, remember, the Holy Spirit is the one who initiates it. You don't have a control over it. So it doesn't happen all the time. So it's not the normal way of healing. The normal way and the best way and the highest way to receive your healing is by your own faith. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can have faith for healing. You can. Faith comes by hearing. I'm going to talk about it. How we can get that faith for healing. It comes by hearing. So remember, I'm going to go over again. I'm going to go over again on the 20 cases that I told you that we have details about who was healed, how they received their healing, and what was wrong with them. He said, in all those cases, Jesus Christ will, make, will say something your faith has made you whole. Be it done to you according to your faith. He said something about faith. Or something you can see their faith in action. These individuals that we got we, we, we have a record of. You see that you will look, you see their faith in action. Or Jesus himself said. Something about faith. Now, Jesus did not say, my power has made you whole. He never said that. Remember when he was teaching and they brought, they opened the roof. When they brought that, uh, uh, the man with paralysis. The Bible says the power of God was present to heal them. The power was there. But none of them got healed until faith activated that power. The woman with the issue of blood. Remember, the multitude trumped Jesus. 
They turned him. They were all over him. The power was there, present. But nobody there, we, we, you, you will be adding to the scripture if he says oh, anybody else was healed there. Until the woman with the issue of blood activated that power by her faith. And she received healing. Are you hearing me, somebody? So we receive healing by faith. That is the common, normal way that you receive your healing. Remember that you can have faith in one area in your life and don't have faith in another area. You can have faith in salvation. You are fully persuaded that if you die now, you go be with Jesus. Because you believe you're born again. Your sins are washed away. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You are the righteousness of God. You have a new creation right now in the presence of God. You can have faith because you've had this many, many times preached. You've had it so many times, so many times, and you believe it. But it is possible that you don't have faith in healing. Why? Because you don't, you, 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 you've not, you've not fed your spirit with faith on healing. Because you've not had a lot of healing scriptures. You've not put them in your spirit. Why? Because of wrong teachings. Because you were told that healing has been done away with. But God doesn't heal anymore. He doesn't heal anymore. So then you don't have, you don't believe that it will work because of wrong teaching. So now, what do you do? Now that I have told you so many things, I am at the point of telling you what to do now to receive your healing. Very important. Follow these things that I'm telling you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. And they will get out of that sick bed. And they will say goodbye to sickness. Remember, Satan will always try to put something in your body. But even when he tries, he will not succeed. You will cast those symptoms out of your body. So now what do you do? So first of all, get you healing scriptures. I just told you now that uh, you will receive by faith. And how does faith come by? It comes by hearing. So get you concordance. Get you healing scriptures. Remember, this is not going to be an instant pudding. It's not going to be an instant pudding. To some of you, it will be. To some... It may not be. But if you follow what I'm going to tell you now, it will come. It may not come right away, but it will come. So now, get healing scriptures. Begin to feed your faith on healing now. I gave you a few of them already. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Isaiah 53, verse 5. Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. Psalms 103 from verse 1 to 3. And there are so many of them. So get healing scriptures and begin to feed on them. Like you feed your physical flesh. Remember, if you don't feed your physical flesh, after a while it becomes weak. And because you ate potato two days ago, doesn't mean that you cannot eat potato again today. The potato you ate two days ago did its own work. Another day requires another food. So don't say, I have read those scriptures before. No, no, no. That's why you're missing it. Feed your spirit. Feed your faith on these healing scriptures. Load it up. Load it up. Load it up. Load it up to the extent that your faith will rise. To the place that it will kick out. Every disease and sickness, they will not have any more room in your body. Because the faith which you have now in you has gotten to a place that the sickness got no other way, no other choice but to check out. They will check out. So, 
get yourself now remember you've waited all this while anyway so why are you so much in a hurry now now that you did all those that you did in the past and did not get any result this is where the result lies so get healing scriptures begin to ponder on them begin to read them begin to meditate upon them begin to put them in your spirit Put them in the spirit. That's where they need to be. In your spirit, not in your mental mind. In your spirit. Once you get hooked, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Once you get hold of this, once this, the scriptures, once, once, you, once you load them up in your spirit. Now, you will know when your faith is up there. Begin to load them up. Begin to meditate on them. Begin to, begin to ponder on them. Roar at them. Speak them out. When faith comes, you will know. You will know. And now once you get to that level, the next thing you're going to do is, remember what I said earlier. You don't pray for healing. You receive it. It is already a finished work. It is a gift from God. So you don't pray and beg for it. As a child of God, if you are born again, it belongs to you. Healing is children's bread. That's what the Bible says. So, now that you know that you got the healing scriptures now, that your spirit is built up, your faith is built up on healing, what are you going to do now? Now is the time for you to receive. How do you receive? We receive by faith, by spoken words. Now, let me give an example of what to say. Because you got to speak to your own body. Remember, Jesus Christ spoke to that fever. When he was at Peter's uh, 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 mother-in-law, when she was uh, sick with a fever, Jesus Christ rebuked. Bible said he rebuked the fever and the fever left. So now is, is the time for you to speak to your body. That's how you receive. Body, I call you in the name of Jesus Christ. I call you whole now and I call you perfect. I receive my healing now in the name of Jesus because Jesus Christ already took my infirmities and he has borne my, my sicknesses. Now I receive by faith. And body, I call you now perfect. I call you whole. I call you strong. And I call you restored. Are you hearing me? This is what he's saying now to your body. When the faith is up there. And now you rebuke Satan. Say, Satan, I command you in the name of Jesus to take your hands off my body. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? Now, remember what I told you earlier? When you say this, you are saying it in faith. Whether it happens immediately, whether you see all the symptoms disappear immediately, don't worry. Don't ever give up again and say it did not work. That's why so many Christians miss it. Remember, you cannot see in the realm of the Spirit. You cannot see what, what just took place when you received that healing by faith. Something started to happen. And you don't want to undo your faith by your words saying, I still have the pains. I still have those uh, symptoms. Nothing happened. It did not work. That's what Satan would like you to say. But don't. Once you have made that proclamation and that confession that body I call you whole and I receive my healing in the name of Jesus and you rebuke Satan, take your hands off my body. Now begin to, you will now, you will now express your faith. Because remember, faith without work or corresponding action is death. It's dead. That's what James says. So now you will begin to show, begin to prove, you begin to ask your faith. Now, faith is expressed or released by words or by action. Sometimes by combination of both. 
So you, 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 you're going to continuously speak to your body. But you are getting better and better every day. But you are getting, oh, you are getting better and better. Oh, I see. Oh, buddy, you are getting restored now every day. I am getting better and better every day. This is even in the midst of symptoms. Remember, we walk by faith, not by sight. So even in the midst of the symptoms still being there, you are calling your body restored, body whole, body perfect, body made complete. And then if there are things that you couldn't do in the past, begin to begin to do them, start to begin to do them gradually. And it is rest assured that your healing must manifest. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And while you are receiving your healing, don't receive your healing telling God, Father, you know how good of a Christian that I am. You know, I'm one of the best Christians in my church. Now, this is why so many Christians are not healed. Because they are not taking healing as a gift. They are not receiving it as a gift. They are trying to equate it to their personal goodness. And it doesn't work that way. It is a gift. You couldn't make yourself whole by your personal righteousness. So you come and you receive by faith. Because it's made available. And then you thank God for it. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now one last thing. Because I'm coming to the end of today's teaching. One last thing is this. Once your healing manifests. Which I am sure it must. If you follow what I just said. It must. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Or son of man that he should repent. So, what he says he will do, he will do it. I am fully persuaded that your healing will spring forth like the morning start. So now, once your healing manifests, remember that Satan would like to try to knock at your door again, the door of your body. He will try to bring those symptoms back to you again and see if you will open the door. Yes, he does that. And that's why I'm telling you what to do now. So once you've received your healing and maybe after a while, those symptoms, you feel those symptoms again. Do not panic. Do not be afraid. Do not be scared. It is Satan who's knocking at the door trying to see if you receive them. And how will you receive them? You will receive them back by saying, Oh, I thought I was healed. I guess I'm not. When you say that, you open the door for him to put those symptoms back again on you. This is what you do, my friends. Once he comes again with those symptoms again, you're going to stand bold and say, No, not in this body. I refuse to allow any symptoms and any disease in this body. This is the temple of the, God, of the Almighty God. Satan, I rebuke you and your symptoms. Now get out of this body in the name of Jesus. When you do that, you will see him pack up his symptoms like one who is packing up for a traveling. He will just check it all out. <laughs> he will pack up his luggage <laughs> and check out. <laughs> blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that you are blessed with this to, uh, to, uh, today's teaching. And if this has helped you, Send this video to your friends you, that you know that they need these uh, 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 teachings. Remember I said earlier, this teaching is made available free of charge by our partners all over the world. If you would love to be a partner of this ministry, you can send a donation using the address that is showing on your screen right now. Friends, I have come to the end of today's teaching. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are watching this program and you are not yet a Christian, which means you are not sure where you will spend eternity. This whole thing of being born again is not clear to you. You don't understand what it means exactly. You may have been a Christian for many years, but to you, you don't really understand what it means being born again. If you are one of those, if this fits your description, now is the time. Don't wait anymore. Do not let this opportunity slip. Or pass you by again. Remember, to be born again means that your spirit is recreated. That you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. 
You have personal relationship now with Jesus Christ. That's what being born again means. You have confessed him with your mouth that he is your Lord and Savior. And now he is one with your spirit. So if you know that you've not done this, remember the time is very short. Even if you say, I'm going to live a hundred years in this earth. Even if you live a hundred years, it's going to come by very quick. Someday your spirit will leave your body. It is a must to everyone. And when your spirit leaves your body, you don't cease to exist. All you did was you departed. And your real you will still be you, which is your spirit, but it's going to some place where you will, will spend eternity. And there are only two locations where your spirit can go once it leaves your body. It's either it goes up to be with Jesus, that's if you're born again, or it goes to the heart of the earth, which is hell. Because the Bible says, hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet you at the coming. For it stays up the dead for you. So there's a, such a place called hell. And it's a place of torment. It's a place of fear. It's a place of darkness. It's a place where you're cut off from anything that is good. You don't want to go to this place. Is even a temporary place. Final destination of hell will be a, 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 a place burning with fire and brimstone. A lake of fire. You don't want to go to that place, my friend. That's why I'm preaching to you today. That's why I'm telling you that you can avoid going there. You don't have to go there. It is by choice that you go there. And I cannot receive salvation for you. I can tell you about it. But you are the one who's going to make that decision today to go to that place, to go to heaven, to be with Jesus, or to go to hell. But Jesus Christ don't want you to go to hell. That's why he paid the price for you. He made everything available to you. He went to the cross in your state, died, went to hell in your state. And now if you believe in him, you will have eternal life. He's just a free gift right now. He's not asking you to do anything. He's not asking you to fast. He's not having you to give yourself a lot of penance. He already did all that for you. All that he's saying now, come on home, son. Come on home, daughter. Come on home. But the price has been paid. Come on, come on and receive that which is precious from me. That's what Jesus Christ is saying to you today. So if you're not born again and you want to be born again today, now is the opportunity. I'm going to lead you right now in a prayer. If you will say this prayer with all your heart and mean it. Your spirit will be recreated this minute. And if you die now, you will not be lost. But you will go be with Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now pray this prayer after me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that he is your son. That he died for my sins. You raised him up from the dead on the third day. On the third day. Jesus Christ, I ask you this day to come into my life. And be my Lord and my Savior. I believe I'm born again. And I believe I'm a child of God now. I believe I'm a Christian. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. If you say that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. You are now a child of God and you are born again. Now, there is a subsequent. There is, a, 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 there is something after salvation. That we call Filling of the Holy Spirit or baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is evidence we're speaking with other tongues. Now, it is available to every Christian. The criteria to receive it is being born again. And you're already born again now, so you can receive it right now. If you go to my iCarve on YouTube, there is a teaching there titled, Speaking in Tongues is for every Christian, every believer. Get hold of that teaching. It will help you, teach you all that you need to know and how to receive the Holy Spirit to be filled with the Spirit of God and speak with other tongues. Now that you are born again, remember that you are now a baby Christian. Find a very good church where they teach the Word of God. Be a member of that church so that you will be taught in the things of Christ, so that you will grow in your faith. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Peter says, receive with meekness. 
He says the milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. So you wanna you wanna grow. You don't wanna you don't wanna be left out as a baby Christian. You don't want Satan to take advantage of you. So now put your nose in the word of God. Get you a Bible. Put your nose in there. Let the Spirit of God teach you. Remember, it is only those who hear the word of God and do them. They are the ones that receive the benefits of the word of God. And as always, brethren, surely there is an end and your expectations will not be cut off. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.